Okay, so here in front of us we have a Graco air diaphragm pump. It happens to be a Husky model 307. So in this video we're going to be really showing you how to rebuild these, but also how to diagnose these so you don't just go and order, you know, every replacement part for this because it is expensive. It's about a four to five hundred dollar pump and also the replacement parts are expensive themselves. So we're going to talk about how to diagnose it so you don't go and order, you know, too many parts that you don't need. This particular unit right here, as we'll show later in the video, has a problem with the air valve. But many other times, I this is a car wash, I have had these used in the past and most of the time it's the diaphragms inside. Either they get a tear or depending on what kind of chemical you're using, they just wear out over time. So we're going to talk about how to diagnose it and um, also showing you the steps on how to replace the part. So we're going to come back on camera and I'll talk a little bit more. Um, about what you need to do. Okay, once again, we're looking at the pump before it's disassembled. Now, there's two kinds of kits for this, the air valve replacement kit and the diaphragm replacement kit. When you talk about the air valve, there's only one model number to use, and we'll show that later on. But when you talk about the diaphragm kits, there's two model numbers, and they differ substantially in price. One of the kits is a Santropine, and the other one is Teflon. You guys know Teflon's a little bit stronger. That one happens to be about $40 more. So you may ask yourself, when would you need the Teflon? You guys need a Teflon when you're using like a, basically something, an acidic chemical. This happens to be for the car wash soap. So I think if I were to order the part, I'd go with the Santropine. If I was using like a wheel cleaner or something very, very high in acidity, I would go about using the Teflon. All right, so we're gonna come back on video and I'm gonna talk about what part I'm gonna be replacing on this pump. All right, now how do you diagnose the pump and see what's really wrong with it? First thing you wanna do before you even go to the pump and start tearing it apart, you wanna look at the lines coming into it, the air pressure, the inlets, check to make sure everything is working properly. Are you getting air pressure? Is the air pressure regulator working properly? Are the lines clogged? Uh, are they dirty? the check valve make sure it's working properly don't you know go and take the pump apart and then see oh no you know something was clogged something wasn't working properly once you go and diagnose all that and see everything is working correctly then go and start looking at the pump side of the issue now so there's really only two main issues that this pump could have one being the diaphragm and the second being the air valve which is directly in the center how do you tell which one it has the issue so you want to turn up the pressure on your pump. If it's at 40, bump it up to 50. If it's at 50, bump it up to 60. Just don't go above 80. This pump really can't handle um, a PSI like that. So if you turn up the air pressure and you see that the pressure starts to slowly drop over time, you know that it's a diaphragm. If it's leaking, if the pump just is losing pressure, you know it has to do with a seal or a diaphragm. If there's no issue there, you want to move on to the air valve which is directly in the center. When I ran this pump, I saw that it would start working for about three to five seconds and cut off. Turn it off, turn it back on, same thing. So I knew that the problem was with the air pressure. I saw my air pressure regulator was working perfectly. So right now I'm very confident that if I go online and order the air valve replacement kit, that'll fix my issue. But before you go and order the part, take the pump apart, look at it, Look at the diaphragm, look at the seals, see if there's any other issues you need to worry about before ordering the air valve replacement, getting it, installing it, and finding out that there may be other issues with this pump. So that's always a good idea. So I'm gonna take you step by step, how to take it apart, how to put it back together, and hopefully save you guys some time and money. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna turn it on manually. I'm gonna go over to the pump. We see we still have pressure in the system, but the pump has stopped working. Okay, so we're going to turn it off and we'll see, uh, we'll come back, we'll go over some steps.